Hello and uh, good morning and uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to take a look today at uh, how I wash our cars here at home. Um, I'm not a detailer, uh, not by any stretch, um, just uh, you know, average Joe just uh, trying to keep his car clean, uh, try and get that done sort of every week or every couple of weeks um, if I can. Um, it's twofold really, it's to look at uh, some of the products uh, that I use, uh, that I personally like to use and why I use them, some of the equipment that I use and um, why I decide to wash the car myself rather than putting it through car washes or have, um, have it hand cleaned uh, by some of these um, you know, supermarket services um, or by car washes or even by uh, valet uh, services which you can find um, around the place which will actually hand prepare the car and, uh, and wash it. Um, so I think for the most part um, when we're washing our cars particularly this time of year we don't really like to do it. It isn't a lot of fun. Right outside now it's about plus two degrees, a bit of fog, a bit of mist in the air um, and it's not, not a fun place to be uh, this time of year. Um, so taking it to the car wash uh, or taking it to one of these uh, supermarket services where they'll sort of jet wash and, and hand clean the car. What is it, five, six pounds uh, in a car wash, maybe 10 pounds for a, a good one. Um, but you can pay 30 pounds, sometimes 40 pounds for some of these hand prepared uh, washes, uh, which are, they do a better job. But of course that becomes quite expensive quite quickly, particularly if you're like me and you like to keep the car clean. Uh, and, and do it, um, which will require you to have it cleaned every week, perhaps uh, particularly this time of year, or certainly every two weeks. So that becomes quite expensive. Um, the other thing to consider as well is damage uh, to the car. Um, and I think most people know now that taking your car to a car wash isn't the best thing for it, um, but it's quick and easy and relatively cheap to keep you doing it regularly. Um, the reason for this is the brushes on the on the um, equipment, uh, whether that be those sort of bristly type ones that uh, are quite common, some of them use this sort of like um, chamois strips that that, uh, that rotate around the drum, and they they slap up against the car basically, um, and it's that that does the damage. Now you've got to remember, obviously, once you go in, into the car wash, there was a car before you, a car before them, and a car before them, and hundreds and thousands, and maybe tens of thousands of cars have been through that car wash before you, um, and they don't replace those brushes that regularly. Um, so they've got dirt in them, um, and as good as they are, that dirt just gets moved around. Um, those brushes then come in contact with your car, and they put light scratches in the bodywork which obviously isn't great. Um, <clears throat> now, initially, maybe once or twice if you do that, um, every sort of couple of months, it's probably not gonna have a huge effect on the car, but if you're doing that regularly, initially, you'd have to look sort of quite closely, but over a period of time, you can stand five meters away from a car and just see if it's, if it's been through car washes regularly, you can see the marks and the swell marks all up and down the body, but it, it's, it's not done that great. Um, you might be able to get those scratches out if you put the car to a detailer they'll probably be able to put a deep polish through it and that, that might help but you know um, you can avoid that uh, if you can and you'll have a much better looking car if you avoid car washes. Um, so the other thing to be careful of is when the cars are being washed quite often uh, unless you go to a, a decent car wash they won't pre-wash the car for you so um, and actually what most people do when they're uh, washing their cars um, put the car out in the driveway, get a bucket of hot soapy water uh, with, a, with a, a decent shampoo, um, a wash mitt or a, um, a sponge, and then literally with the sponge straight on the car and then start washing it down. It will clean the car because the soap will help break up the dirt and the more you go over it, make sure you're covering all the surfaces, it will break it up uh, and then you'll rinse off or jet wash it all off and the car will be cleaner than when you started, obviously. But the problem there comes um, very similarly, actually, to what happens in the car wash. Um, you'll get your sponge, you'll put it on top of the car, and that dirt that's on the car, you're just gonna, yes, it's gonna uh, break up, but you're just gonna be rubbing that around the bodywork. 
um, and the fine grains and dirt, particularly on the lower part of the car, uh, that picks up a lot of traffic film, um, you're going to be wiping that into the bodywork and over time you're going to be doing essentially what the car wash is doing and, and, and putting uh, scratch marks into the bodywork. So um, for me, I've probably been to a car wash ever, maybe three times. Um, and uh, so, because so, I know the damage it does to the car, and I, I don't tend to use those sort of supermarket five pound washes for the reasons that I've just said. Um, and I have, however, used a couple of really good balloting companies. Uh, there are a couple quite close to us here, and they do a, a pretty reasonable job with a pre wash but they charge 30, 40 quid a time to do it. So what I'm doing here, I think essentially is the same job that they're doing there, but initially it costs a bit of money because you've got chemicals yourself uh, and, and the cleaning products. I've talked about that in a minute, about what, what, what I use. Um, but eventually, essentially, yeah, if you're cleaning in two cars every week or two weeks, you're definitely going to be saving money. So I thought what I'd do then, so that, that's the reason why I clean my cars. Um, I'll look at the hardware as well that we use and we'll look at some of the um, chemicals and things that uh, are products that we use. Um, so the first thing is a decent um, pressure washer. Um, I've got this uh, Karcher uh, K7, which is brilliant. Um, I got this uh, because, as well as cleaning the cars and stuff, I don't think it really matters an awful lot as to, you know, I don't think, I mean, this cost me about 350 quid. I don't think you've got to spend that really. As long as it's got decent power to it, um, decent flow, because then when you're using uh, lances, which I'll talk about in a minute, you want to get a good aeration through there to get a decent foam. Um, so, but I found this pretty wizard. It's got some gadgetry on here, which will allow you to change the pressure, which is quite important when you're doing wheel arches. Uh, and then you go into sort of the more sensitive uh, parts of the car, you can sort of turn the power down, um, which is quite useful. But the really cool thing about it is the different settings on here. So using the car, um, soft areas on woods and hard areas like patios and brickwork, etc. Uh, or you can have it on mix, uh, which basically is a bit of that uh, out the end, um, which is when you're sort of mixing it with soaps and things, uh, when you're cleaning the patio and what have you. Uh, but I can't like that because what it does is it puts like a, um, uh, 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 what it does is it puts like a bit of a watering can effect over the car. So I tend to use that when I'm cleaning the car off after my second wash um, because sometimes what you can do with too much pressure into the soap you try to clean off is actually re-energize the soap and you end up with even more soap. Uh, so yeah, I tend to use that. Anyway, you'll, you'll see that today. Uh, so anyway, a decent uh, pressure washer. You don't have to go out and spend hundreds of pounds on one. You've got one at the moment that works. I'm sure that'll be fine. The other thing that I uh, use is my, uh, my deionizer. And this is basically a pressurized uh, vessel. Um, and in it, oh, and if you can see in this picture, uh, but I've got this window cleaning uh, chemical compound and that's inside there. Uh, water from our house goes inside here and then it comes out here and then goes into the uh, pressure washer. Um, you see that detailers use uh, these ionized um, uh, capsules in line with the water hose and they're very, very good. They cost about 60, 70 pounds. Um, and this is essentially doing the same job. It's filled with the same stuff. But the idea behind it is it takes out all of the impurities in the water, takes out all of, some of the hard chemicals, um, in our area, our water quality is about um, 350 parts per million, uh, which is below 500 is considered safe to drink, so that's no problem. But you notice that when you wash your car with your hose water or your tap water, uh, if you let it dry, particularly if it's a sunny day, it bakes onto the car and then you're left with this little white um, sort of uh, chlorine-y, um, chalky uh, residue on the car. That's all of the impurities that are in the water still. Uh, perfectly safe to drink, but it makes cleaning the car a bit difficult because if you don't get around to the, uh, particularly the glass quick enough, then you end up with these marks on it. What this does, it takes all of those impurities out. So uh, the water that comes out of here is zero parts per million. So you literally can wash the car down and leave it. You don't even need to chamois it off or, or towel it off. 
I do because then I want to wax it uh, later on. Uh, so I tend to do it. But the great thing about it is whenever you finish cleaning a car and however well you toweled it down, you've gone through all the door, door wells, door seals, etc., you always find a drip that comes down the body panel somewhere from the mirrors or from the boot area or from the window overhang and it streaks down the window. You've forgotten all about the car. You come out the next day and you see these big streaks coming down it, which is a real pain. Not with this, so that's why that's why I use that, uh, and I use it through the entire wash as well, which is a, which is a bit over the top, but uh, anyway, that's what I do. Uh, so, so that's basically um, the hardware uh, that I use. Uh, have a good uh, bucket. Um, I got this for uh, Christmas because my old one died. Uh, I also use a, a pump sprayer uh, that is for traffic filming uh, on the car, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, the other thing I use is a decent uh, hand pump. Uh, this is for uh, cleaning the wheels with my um, alkaline wheel cleaner. Uh, and then the other two bits of kit, uh, I've got two of these. Uh, this stuff smells lovely, it's cherry. Fantastic. Um, is a foam lance and um, I've got two of these and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, one is for a pre-wash um, and the other one is for the shampoo because I like to do um, contactless as, as much as I can, but I'll explain that in a minute. So anyway, two lances. If you're gonna use a pre-wash, uh, which I strongly recommend you do, and I'll talk about it in a minute, um, use a decent uh, foam lance. This one is from um, ProClean, I think. It was, it was one of the better ones on the market, I think. It's totally solid. Uh, it's got the cartridge adapter on the side of it here, which you can just plug straight into the lance. You can adjust the mix. I've tried that now, mate left it there you can adjust the mix on the top that's the amount of um, liquid that comes uh, through the water it gets aerated in the nozzle and you can also adjust the um, um, you can adjust the sort of azimuth if you like of how much um, foam uh, is sprayed so you can either have a sort of fairly narrow channel or you can have a very a wide fan uh, as you're as you're spraying on the car so that's the other uh, thing that I use um, and then that's basically it as far as kit um, is concerned. And then I use my uh, wash mitts here for, uh, for the bodywork. Uh, I use a towel here to dry the car off. Um, and then I use various cloths here uh, for my glass cleaning and for uh, polish, which I'll talk about polish uh, in just a second. Okay, right. So why all this gear then? Um, it takes a little while to build up as well, so I wouldn't recommend going out and just buying all this stuff um, because you want to see what works for you and, and just sort of have a play around with it. But what I would always recommend you do is starting off with, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a pressure washer, whether you use a deionizing is entirely up to you, uh, but get yourself a good bucket or two, get yourself a decent hand mitt, uh, get yourself a decent shampoo, um, and get yourself a decent pre-wash. Pre-washes, I think, really, really important. Okay, so what's the pre-wash then and why do we do it? Um, now the pre-wash is usually delivered from the, um, um, from the, from the cartridge in my case, the pressure washer, uh, through into the, um, into the foam lance here. Uh, I mix this in about one third um, of um, chemical and then a two thirds of water. So, what you would do, and I'll show you this, what you'd do is you'd spray this all over the car and it's a really thick foam. The idea behind it, and it, this stuff with, with ProClean works pretty well, but I've used this other Gen Jenny Chem stuff, which I've used a couple of times now, and it is even better. But the idea behind this is it sits on the car for sort of 10 minutes or so, and then gradually with gravity, that the thick foam starts to fall off the car it starts to break up the dirt and it literally pulls the dirt off the car. Now, it's not a case of just jet washing off and being done with it. You probably could get away with it, um, but it takes off most of the dirt so that, you're, so that when you do have contact with the car, and contact at some point is inevitable if you really want to get the car clean, um, when you do come into contact with it, most of or the worst of the dirt is already off the car, which is great. So going back to what I was saying earlier on, going back to a dry car, getting your sponge with soap and going over it, that's going to be marking and scratching the car. What this will do is it'll get the worst of that off. Fantastic. So you'll see me use that a little bit later. I'll show you what I use. 
Um, the other thing that I tend to use as well is my um, TFR, which is the traffic film remover. And I'll start with this, particularly when the car's really dirty, particularly this time of year. Um, and I apply that with my spray bolt here, and I mix this in a ratio of one to 10. This again is Jenny Chem Ultra um, uh, TFR. It's quite abrasive, um, um, sort of semi-toxic material, uh, liquid, um, and you don't want to leave it on too long. It's really designed to get the worst of all the crud that comes off the road, usually on the sort of bottom half of the car and on wheels. Um, you do this because the, the, the traffic film remover um, as I say, it's, it's quite corrosive. You don't want to spray it all over the car. You want to avoid any chrome and really try and avoid plastics as well uh, too much uh, because over time it will probably start to discolour it or tarnish it. But if you get it off within about five minutes, I don't think it's going to cause you a big issue. So I think you leave it on there for too long. Um, and you spray this on the bottom of the car to get rid of the worst of that dirt. All that crud that comes off the road with the wheels spit up. Um, all of the tar, um, all of the grit, and, the, and particularly now, now the salt that's on the roads, it gets rid of that. It does, a, it does a fantastic job. You literally see this stuff just sort of fall off. So um, I start then with a, a traffic film remover. I use it with this spray can going all the way around the bottom of the car, literally covering the whole bottom of the car, including the wheels. I let that settle for about five or six minutes, and then I go with the jet wash, uh, just with uh, water, uh, spray, and then just jet wash all that off. That's the worst of the dirt off. The next thing I'll do then is I'll use, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, there's my alkaline cleaner, but I've got a bigger thing here now, it's a shampoo, uh, alcohol wheel cleaner. Um, so this is, the, this is another Jenny Cam product. Um, I think this is, this is good, it's not the best stuff that I've used, um, but they sell it in big five litre and 10 litre um, uh, barrels if, if, you, if, if you're using it commercially, I suppose. But it's pretty good, it's really easy to put on. Uh, it foams up quite nicely, gets into all the places, particularly if you're using um, your, uh, your spray gun. There. And um, I'm, I say I'm quite happy with it. I don't think it's the best product on the market at the moment, but it's very, very good, it's very easy to use, and as I say, it's reasonably cheap, particularly in large volumes. And if I've gone over it already with the TFR, then the worst of it is off. Um, so once the TFR is off, I'll then go over each wheel. Now, what you don't want to do with this is go and spray all your wheels and then slowly go around it because you don't want to be leaving it on there again too long. Again, it's quite corrosive stuff. So I'll do each wheel, spray, literally coat the wheel, in, including the tyres all the way around. And then I'll get one of, the, uh, one of my brushes. One of my brushes here. This is some new ones I got the other day. The old ones are knackered. Um, and go in each each spoke into the wheel barrels barrels as well with the, with the wheel nuts going all the way around the back on the inner tire inner part of the wheel as well into the brake calipers and really do a thorough job then I'll rinse that off and then go on to the next one and then uh, go all the way around um, so TFR done wheels done next then is snow foam so and um, if you do get one of these pro clean uh, lances it comes with one of these, uh, I've got a few of these now actually. Um, this is their Pro Clean Snow Foam, and I've got to say, I think it was 30 quid for one of these and a lance. This stuff's good. I mean, this really does the job. Um, it's super thick, it hangs onto the car really well, particularly when you get the mix right. Um, no complaints with that at all. That's Pro Clean Snow Foam, it's, uh, it's very, very good. Um, I've started to use, um, where is it, I've uh, started to use this um, uh, Cherry Blizzard, which is again uh, a Jenny Chem product, and I've used this a couple of times now, I'd say it's just as good if not better than the Pro Clean, um, it's got a really good break up formula, uh, and you literally, you see the, the dirt coming off the car and falling onto the ground, and you, right in front of you, it's really, really good stuff. Whether you use this or whether you use the Pro Clean one, it's up to you, Auto Glim do one as well, it's up to you what you use, but I, say I, like, I like these products, so they seem to work for me. So I'm just starting to use that Jenny Kim one now, as so I've been using the uh, Pro Clean Snow Foam. But if you get your Lance and you've got one, you'll get one of these with it, then I would suggest continuing with that while you're getting used to it. And if you're happy with it, it does a job for you, then stick with it. Just stick with what you know and what you like to use. So we've covered the car now completely with uh, Snow Foam, and it's sitting on there nice and thick. 
leave it on there for a good 10 minutes, wait for it to sort of rinse off itself mostly, and then go over with the jet wash and then just clean it all off. So we've tear-fired it, um, we've done the wheels, we've uh, snow foamed it, and the next thing then is to, now it's gonna be a contact, you need to get the shampoo on the car. Um, you can do this in one or two ways. Um, I use, when I'm doing that, I use a two bucket method, okay? So I've got a bucket of my shampoo, uh, which is this uh, Cherry Bomb uh, shampoo that I use. Again, another Jenny Chem product. It comes out like, I mean, if you ever had a Chinese and you use a sweet and sour and it goes cold overnight and you leave it in the fridge, it comes out like it's glue. That's exactly what this, and it smells really, really nice, but it's super thick. And uh, when you mix it up with the water, it really foams nicely. It foams nicely in your mitt or on your sponge. I think it's a really, really good product. Um, so I've been using that, uh, but they they also do a uh, another one here, which is their shampoo that goes in through the lungs. But whichever one you use, if you're going to use your, you're going to apply it by washing it onto the car, then use two buckets. Uh, and the reason you do that is you don't want to put the dirty cloth that's just come off the car back into your soapy water. You want one with your soapy water, with whichever shampoo you use, and you want another bucket, which is just purely clean water. So dip your, your, your mitts into your soapy water, go over the car, the bits that you need, and then when you want to get some more again, dip it in and rinse it off in the um, clean water, and then re-dip back into your shampoo, and then go around the car again. So. You, you have to have contact with the car if you're going to clean it properly. I think that's, just, that's a given. Um, but what you're doing is you're minimising the amount of scratching or marking you're going to do on the car. You've minimised that enormously by traffic film and by, um, by um, uh, foaming the car uh, with a pre-wash. And you're minimising it further by now um, making sure that every time you're coming back into contact with the car, you've got a clean mitt. The other method of doing it, which I'm going to show you today, is by applying the, uh, uh, the shampoo with a, with, a, with a lance again. So this is the second time now you're going to be losing, using the lance. This way you cover the car completely with the shampoo and then you go back with your mitt and then you start washing the car. The difference here is you only need one bucket, which is a rinse bucket. So you come off the car, you rinse your, your mitt in the uh, clean water and then you go back on the car. But the difference here is that the, the Lance delivers the, the, delivers the shampoo on the car, so you don't then need to have to keep get into a bucket to, to apply your soap. Okay, so I'll show you that today. Anyway, whichever way you go about it, two bucket method or one bucket method with a Lance, uh, wash it all off, once, it, once it's all clean, rinse it all off, and then basically your car is now clean. And it will look fantastic. Um, let the worst of the water uh, run off, and then you're gonna, uh, oops, not that one, uh, there's one of things. Uh, right, so, um, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is fantastic. Uh, I, forget, I think this is a Meguiar's. I can't remember who, who makes this, I can't remember. Anyway, so just, just, just look up like a, a lint um, car towel, and I used to use chamois leathers, uh, but they're a pain. You gotta soak them first, um, and, uh, you know, keep rinsing them out and keep rinsing them in the water. They're okay, but these are far better. You literally, oh, noise it. you literally throw this on the car and then with sort of one hand hold it, the other hand just wipe them all the way over, uh, in through, uh, all, all over the car. It, it literally takes you five to 10 minutes and your car is completely, well, pretty much completely uh, dry. Um, that's a good one for doing the body work. Uh, I've got another one here somewhere, yeah. So this one here um, would probably be better for using all the door shuts and stuff. So opening the doors and doing all the door seals, this is a little bit easier to use. Uh, once the car is completely dry, um, then uh, the next thing to do then is, if you're going to, is to apply your polish. Um, uh, I've got one here. I use this uh, Quick Wax. Now this isn't a, a deep polish at all. It's simply, just to make it look nice uh, for, the, for the week or two that you're gonna be um, using it. And um, I think it works really, really well. The water beads off it really, really nicely. Lots of different brands around. Um, Auto Glim do a nice polish, but what I find with those is that you've gotta work with it really, really quickly because it dries on the car really, really quickly, particularly when it's warm outside. This is just a liquid polish. 
that smells lovely. <laughs> Get high on this stuff. Uh, it's, it's an orange uh, polish, uh, again by Jenny, uh, Jenny Cam. Spray it on with one cloth, wipe it on, cover the area. It goes up a bit of a dull colour, and then you get your other um, other mitt, uh, your other, other other clean cloth, and literally just go over it and buff it. You can get around the car in about twenty minutes. Um, detailers watching this will look at it and go, oh, yeah, twenty minutes what was wax? That's not going to have a great effect. It does. It works. I'm sorry, it does. It isn't a deep polish, and if you know car detail detailers out there, um, you know if you will be doing a, a thorough deep shine on the car, that's not what this is. It's a surface polish. I'm sure you, I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, go around the car then, finish it off with a polish. Once that's done, uh, I then go back to the wheels and then uh, there I use this Long Life Tire Shine and apply it with this um, uh, sponge here and it's kind of shaped to the wheel shape. Um, this stuff is fantastic. This, this, this advertised to last a couple of weeks and even in this weather, it does. Um, it's quite easy to put on. Um, it's, it goes everywhere, so you just have to be very, very careful with it. I start off with the inner part of the tyre, then I go with the shape of it all the way around the outside of it, up to about an inch inside the tyre wall, up to the tyre surface itself, go all the way around it, and it just finishes the car off beautifully. Uh, that's it. So, that's what I use. That's why I wash my car the way that I do. Um, that's the technique explained, the hardware, and some of the uh, chemicals and, and cloths and brushes and bits and bobs that I use. Uh, so now it's just a case of getting out there and uh, showing you it, how it's, how I do it. Uh, putting it into practice, let's go and have a look. So this is the car that we're gonna be uh, washing our uh, beloved Nissan Leaf. Excellent car, I will add. Um, so this is after a couple of weeks of not being washed and driving around in winter weather. Um, you can see what I was talking about uh, earlier on about the traffic film building up at the lower half of the car. You can see the discoloration there between the, the top and the sort of lower panels on the car. Um, the wheels, again, are coated with uh, film. And they're not uh, looking too bad. And um, yeah, again, if you keep your car uh, washed regularly, then you're not going to have so much of an issue with it. Uh, you're going to keep on top of it. And you can see there that even some of the tire blacker is... Uh, uh, tire shines on there as well again going around the back of the car you can see it's uh, really dirty on the lower parts yeah, and the tfr is going to remove uh, the large a large part of that uh, and then uh, going inside the car we've got to clean it all out as well um, <clears throat> i won't show that as part of this video um, because that's just hoovering the mats and uh, stuff it's just rather unexciting um, <clears throat> and then coming around the front Again, around the side and you can see on the door panels here where it's got really dirty so I'm gonna go ahead now and hoover out the car clean the mats uh, I'm gonna move the car as well so it's just off the drive so we don't get all of that uh, foam on my drive uh, and go into the uh, drains um, and uh, I'll come back and we'll start the um, start the tier fire on the pre-wash okay so uh, let's get into it uh, then shall we so the first uh, process as I mentioned earlier on I'm doing a bit of my Benny Hill impression here because I, I sped the uh, video up 200% uh, otherwise you're going to be here forever um, uh, the first step of the process is the TFR which is the traffic film uh, remover and as I mentioned I use this um, spray bottle which I think I picked up from Amazon for um, 10 or 15 quid or something uh, but yeah you can get them pretty much uh, anywhere um, you kind of want something that could also give you a pressure release as well because at the end of it you want to release you release the pressure with like a little valve that makes it nice and simple so you'll notice here as i'm going around the car uh, i'm just spraying the bottom half of the car uh only because it's really only that that needs it otherwise i mean this stuff isn't i have massively expensive but it's not cheap either so you really only want it on the parts of the car that really need it as so my neighbor comes out and says hello and we have a, a lengthy chat i'll spare you that because uh, i'll edit it out but uh, all the way around the bottom of the car including the wheels now we are going to go over the wheels uh, again uh, with the dedicated al uh, alkali uh, wheel cleaner uh, but this traffic film remover is just 
brilliant. Um, I mean, you can almost get away with just using the TFR alone just for the wheels. Uh, but anyway, I want to go over it and um, uh, and brush the wheels properly with a with a with the alkaline um, cleaner. In any case, so all the way around the car, um, paying particular attention, as I say, to the uh, bottom parts of the panels specifically, and the undersides and the door sills as well. Uh, so really, really important. And of course, you can do the wheel arches as well um to uh again uh get the worst of it off um so you leave that then for about I don't know, five minutes maybe 10 minutes uh but no longer than that because as uh otherwise it starts to it, it could potentially damage uh your your paintwork if left on there for too long too many too many times so uh yeah just just enough basically to go and make yourself a cup of tea uh and uh, come straight back and uh, and get it off so i use the jet wash now on its sort of most uh powerful so what one down from uh, the patio uh, hard surface um, because you really want to get all this off now the, the TFR has done its job in dissolving the dirt um, and we don't want it on the bodywork uh, really for any longer than it has to be so if all of your or if any of your um, you know jet washes needs to be thorough this is the one when you take the snow foam off you don't need to worry about it too much because you're going to be shampooing the car uh, and then of course after you shampooed it that's the next time that you want a thorough uh, clean but this you want to get sort of up close and personal to get this um, get this stuff off you can see already uh, just with the TFR the effect that that's had on the wheels and the bottom parts and the bottom panels of the car it, it really is fantastic and this one from uh jenny chem um well it's actually the only one i've used uh and i've i've i find it absolutely uh fantastic so go all the way through the wheels um and all over the bodywork you can spray this on the lights and you can spray it on the sort of bumper areas um on the instructions it says avoid them um for you know for prolonged um soaking of, of those areas could lead to some damage but if you're on there for a while i really don't think it matters uh, okay so now we talk about the um uh pre-wash and i've just amending some settings there on the pre-wash itself the important thing here is to get it thick enough that it hangs on the car and not too thick that it doesn't come off the car um i've probably in fairness got it a little bit thick here because you can see it is coming down but it's it's not traveling down that quickly and um you saw me mess around with the settings on top there and that controls the the dilution rate uh, as well as the azimuth the fan which i mentioned uh, earlier on so arguably here this is probably uh, on the side perhaps of being a little bit too thick but you can see it running off here at the bottom there on the door sills it's running off nicely so it's doing its job what you don't want is it to stay on there uh, to not stay on there very long because you want it to hug the car and you want it to um, soak in and you want it to break up the dirt and then you want it to to run off so it's a balance really so just play with the settings you can see here uh, I left this for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes and it's it's coming away uh, quite nicely uh, dripping off I just would have liked to have seen that a more visible um, um, sort of gravita gra gravitationally uh, sink down over the panels a little bit better uh, but yeah okay it's it's not too bad at all uh, so again we've not touched the car here there's been no contact with it whatsoever we haven't rubbed anything in anywhere the TFR was contactless uh, and the uh, pre-wash is uh, contactless as well so we're gonna uh, get all this off the car now so like I say you don't really have to worry too much about getting all of this off um, it there's still dirt in it so it has to come off but um, yeah you you don't want to uh, bust the gut over it if you see a few areas there that still see a little bit of soap on there it's it's not the end of the world but just get the worst of it off um, so as you can see the way that i'm doing this i start from the top of the car and then work my way down and just let the water allow it to sort of soak it down again helping the uh, snow foam uh, do its job um 
there's some areas here in the windscreen well there um where it really accumulated <laughs> it was really thick so yeah this was definitely a little bit too thick you can see on the bottom of the car here where it's just still hugging even with all that water um so uh yeah i i, I need to either have a look at my dilution there or uh, or the setting on the on the lance itself but you can see how the car is really coming on and bearing in mind we've not even touched the car yet um this is all been through tfr uh and a um a pre-clean with a with a snow foam and it they just do a brilliant job if you wanted to you could just leave it at this point again because i'm using uh deionized water at zero parts per million i could just let that run off now and the car would look you know really really good certainly a hundred times better um than uh, than when we uh, than when we started so looking um, you know very good indeed obviously we the next thing we need to do uh, is uh, get the wheels done I might have mentioned in the intro that I do the wheels first I do sometimes um, particularly if I don't want to leave the car hanging around for too long if it's if it's quite hot outside and it might bake some of the water on uh, but again with this deionized water it's not really much of a problem and it's quite um, quite cold out so decent head of steam on the um, on, on the on the pressure gun i had a bit of a problem with this i had to go back in the garage because i hadn't tightened it up uh, properly uh but getting everywhere and yes even on the tires so getting right up and uh, close and personal uh with the uh, with the calipers spraying on the the discs the calipers themselves and really what you want to do is is get the wheel cleaner right deep inside so that you're cleaning the inside of the wheel as well nothing worse than having a nice clean alloy on the outside and then just within it you know standing there within a few feet of the car you can see all the inside of the wheel is dirty that's what usually happens with a lot of these hand washing companies they don't get right inside so i use a brush here which is a bendy brush which allows me to get right inside the wheel up behind the actual spokes themselves and also um, up and around the caliper so in those places that are sort of quite hard to reach um, these um, these brushes work uh, work really really well um, the other reason uh, for using the the brush is it's got a reasonably abrasive surface but not too much um if you use uh, and it keeps all of the the liquid actually on the surface whereas if you use like a sponge the sponge seems to sort of soak it up um and it doesn't have such a great effect so you see uh, initially i've used the big wire brush that gets into some of the uh inaccessible places uh, and then straight on uh, I use this kind of detailing brush they call it or you can use a paint brush it doesn't really matter um, if the brush is dry and it's the first time you've used it in a while give the brush a squirt with your wheel cleaning fluid and that gets it off going you get a really nice foam with this stuff uh, and it, it works just brilliantly again we're not scrubbing here we're just literally washing on the wheel cleaner um i normally start with um each sort of corner like like you're cleaning the panels on the sort of panel by panel sort of spoke by spoke starting with the outside then going up to the inside and then moving around and then of course uh, also going around the tire itself if you're going to be using tire shine then you want that to go on a clean surface you don't want that to go on uh, a dirty tire because uh, uh, the effect isn't so good and it doesn't stick so well so make sure you use a, a good clean uh, surface for that so i've gone on to the other wheel and i've um pre-conditioned that if you like uh well, letting the wheel cleaner soak in while i go back to the wheel that i've just done and give it a good clean notice see i've done the arches again and i've gone right inside the wheel there to clean it out so here i've uh, pre-wet the brush uh, the front wheels are always much dirtier and excuse my bum crack uh, in this photo <laughs> um, so um, ill-fitting jeans or ill-fitting body to the jeans uh, one of the two um, but yes I've, I've squeezed a, a little bit on the brush down and, and that just helps again just get you a nice better uh, access and uh, getting the fluid right into those inaccessible places so there you see it i mean I'm, i've gone around the back of the car here now and, I've, and i'm doing the other wheels but you can see it um it, it makes uh, makes uh, such a difference so now we're going to go on to the shampoo and again Oh, I've adjusted it here, but the shampoo is again a little bit thick. But you see how this works differently. This actually sticks to the car now. It's not meant to 
by gravity to fall off. It's meant to stick on the car because of course this is your this is your soap. You don't want the soap to come off. You want the soap to stay on uh, as you then um, apply your mitt or your uh, or your sponge. So this is meant to be thick, but I think it was just a little bit too thick, and there was a little bit too much of it. Uh, but you know, you got to play around with these things. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. Um, um, for the obvious reasons but it does make a very nasty mess of your road and uh, you get a few uh, looks from passers-by thinking uh, that this is going to be a nice road. I ice skating rink tomorrow as it's uh, due to freeze overnight which uh, which isn't always helpful um, anyway so cover the car in this just as just as you see and um, like I say this is another method for applying soap you can use a two bucket method where you've got one bucket with your soap and you and your shampoo uh, and then the other bucket is just a clean uh just to rinse it out i've just got the one bucket of course because now the soap is on this stuff from jenny chem as well this um this uh snow blizzard i think they call it it's got a little wax in it i've got to be honest i don't think it does i mean it, it, i'm not a lot i'm not saying they're lying uh but when you look at the finish it it, it it's slight, there's a slight gloss on there so you could, could argue it has got some um waxing in it but uh yeah yeah obviously you want to go over it and wax it yourself with a with a good polish um the only thing i would say about putting the soap already on the car is that normally when you apply the soap yourself you can see where you've been because if it hasn't got soap on it then you haven't done it uh, but if a car is completely covered in soap then it's difficult to see where you've been uh, so what i recommend you do with anything like this to make sure that you haven't missed anything i got locked out the car there for a minute um what i recommend you do with anything like this uh is just go panel by panel uh literally break the car up in in uh different panels or quarters or halves depending how 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 large the panel is like for the bonnet for example um put that in you know in a half uh and then you won't miss anything basically or do the top half and then do the front grille and the um uh wind diffuser at the bottom as a separate piece rather than trying to cover the whole thing because you will miss something and uh, there's nothing worse than having a nice clean car then looking around and realizing there's a big dirt patch uh, probably unlikely given you've done the pre-wash and the tfr uh, but yeah that that's just the, the better way to do it to make sure that um, that you don't uh, that you don't forget anything so as you see with this soap uh, working slightly differently to the uh, pre-wash is it's clinging on even though i've gone over it uh, with a wet mitt now and mixed it with water it's it's sticking to the car um so this is the first time that we've actually touched the car apart from cleaning the wheels with a brush this is the first time in the process that we've actually uh, touched the body panels uh with our with a contact cleaning uh, with a with a sponge or or with a mitt uh, in this case. Um, next question: Some people ask me is sponge or mitt? Mitt, one hundred percent, because it just feels better on your hand. Uh, you can get into the places. You can reach around the seals. You can reach reach around the. Uh, wheel arch is much better and you're going to miss stuff with a sponge i'm afraid um and actually i think the mitt uh fiber uh mitt that i'm using it wasn't expensive i think it was like 10 or 15 quid or something uh so you know you can find cheaper ones um but a really good one will last you a lot longer and if it, it really does feel nice in the hand and it really does uh foam up the soap uh, nicely so yeah if anything i'd I always use a mitt uh, and I would spend a little bit of money on that because that's the point, the only point really you're going to contact the car. And so you might want to do that or you will want to make sure you do that with a decent surface. Once I've, uh, with a decent cloth, once I've gone around the whole car, I then go around it again uh, with just the wheel arches and the door sills uh, just to make sure uh, that uh, they're all covered because they are invariably the dirtiest parts of the car um and that's basically it that's the car essentially washed now with the um paintwork body glass and uh, and wheels and now it's just a case of using that um soft settings i was uh, mentioned to you earlier on uh which basically uses uh, a sort of a, a, i don't know a water um 
uh, a gentle water a spout over the car and then I finish it off with a high power setting to make sure it's come out of all the wheel arches and all the sort of very inaccessible places but uh, initially uh, I use the settings like a watering can it drips off but then towards the end you just need to make sure that it's out of all those uh, little nooks uh, and uh, crannies and you can see the car, the car now is looking pretty uh, immaculate and you know yep yeah, you could leave it here no problem with the deionized uh, water that will drip off and, you, and honestly I've done it before it leaves no traces but we are going to dry it off because uh, I want to show you the uh, the waxing. So uh, grab hold of your uh, your big drying towel. This one I think, as I remember, for us was Meguiar's. Uh, it's excellent, very thick, sheepskinny kind of um, uh, towel. Uh, use both hands um, uh, to get around the car fully. Uh, clean the glass with it. Clean the body panels, and you know, literally go over it like you're drying a child. And um, uh, it dries really really nicely it's so much easier than using a chamois it's a hundred times easier than using a chamois and a hundred times quicker and and the result is a hundred times better so forget chamois now drying towels are so much better and i think kinder to the car as well um the only thing i would say is you're getting towards the bottom of the car and you'll see this when we come around um that you want to make sure that it doesn't touch the floor you start picking up soap and grit and grinding that into your car then you defeat the whole object so um what i tend to do is i i have one part of the towel in, in like my like my left hand for example just as you can see there uh and then as I, as I come down to the bottom i hold that in my left hand and then in the right hand oh my wife told me we had some shopping in the back of the car so i had to take that in uh and then um and then finish the job off uh so come back uh, here in just a second so uh close the tailgate uh, and then uh, continue on uh, with the job so as i come around to this right hand side of the car i use the left one, one of my hands to hold the tail particularly on the lower parts uh, and then uh, use the your other hand then just to uh, wipe the surfaces that you need and that will prevent the towel from um, um for, from hitting the ground it sounds like pretty sensible stuff really um you know teaching granite suck eggs here and how to dry a car but uh yeah just just little tips there otherwise you end up with it uh, dragging on the floor and it's uh you can see there look my uh, i don't know if i can actually demonstrate in that i can't really see it here yeah, one 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 hand is holding the towel the other the other hand is uh using using the drying so uh that's pretty much uh that's the car dried off um i'm looking at the clock here i can't see but that's no more than about 10 minutes really no having to sort of keep rinsing in a in a cold bucket oh there you go look one hand on one hand polishing there you go there you go i knew the demo would come in somewhere um yeah none of this rinse 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 dreadful experience out of the chamois this is so much easier and i say the effect uh is um is so much uh is so much better as well so really really uh, uh really pleased with it Okay, so I think that's uh, pretty much uh, the car done. Uh, the uh, last couple of things that we need to do um, is uh, tire shine and glass and the uh, polish uh, as well. So we'll take um, we'll take a, a, a quick look at that. I'll just pause the video here now uh, because I might need to make uh, a small change. Ah, oh, no, okay. So uh, cancel that. Uh, so just continuing on, when we now look at the door shuts, this won't take very long um i showed you the small cloth that i used uh, earlier on that's another Maguire's uh, towel but it's obviously much smaller uh, and ideal for these sorts of jobs um people say well why would you, you know, why do you bother and a lot of people don't actually bother with this uh but I mean, there are a few things worse than having a night getting into a nice clean car and as you step over the threshold there you see all the dirt and the traffic film that sort of um that's built up i mean it, it to me, it looks um, absolutely dreadful, really. And it's such a shame that uh, you know, people don't do this enough um, because, you know, you've got a lovely car there and it's just spoiled with uh, with all the dirt. If you if you just spend 10 or 15 minutes doing this after each wash, uh, your car will always look uh, immaculate as where well, the doors are open, all the uh, all the doors are closed. Uh, I, th I, th I think it makes um, I think it makes a, a, a big difference. Um, also, as you're getting in and out of the car, you scuff your heels and boots um, on the door sill there at the top. And most cars now have a uh, what's a, a plate or something. On my Nissan Leaf, which is the Tecna, it has a, a plastic sort of strip inset in there some even have chrome with the, the the name of the brand of the car on there which um um is 
gets marks just as much. Uh, so this is an opportunity then for you to um, get your uh, get your cloth and uh, give that uh, a good clean. Uh, so yeah, I think I think that's I think that's pretty much all I need to show you of that, and then we can then we can get on uh, with the. Uh, with the waxing um so the wax like i say is uh, yeah it, it's, it's a quick wax basically it's not a, a deep shine um like uh you, you, you know you, you can achieve with um you know other brands um the, what, what i actually like about it um is it's quick i mean that's uh, it, by by definition it's it's a quick wax it's not going to take you forever but it stays quite lucid on the body of the car it, it it's quite lucid on the car which means it's quite easy to move around the the uh the body panels um now you can either spray this directly on the cloth which is probably a better idea because as i've done it there you you do get the odd remnants uh on the glass but i clean the glass later on so it doesn't normally bother me it's much quicker to actually spray it directly on the body um get yourself a fold your cloth over two or three times get a nice thick pad and then just work it in slowly in circles just like you would do any polish but you don't have to press hard and that's the key thing here you just literally ought to wipe it into the uh into the surface of the body panel and again like anything whenever you're uh whenever you're um cleaning or waxing uh the car just go panel at a time so i've just started on the uh, on the bonnet here and you can see um i'm just going around in small circles on the top and the front and the sides of the bonnet just working it in you don't have to go absolutely mad on this and spend ages on it what you don't want to do is let it dry so if you are doing this in the summertime and the sun's baking on then um yeah don't, don't leave it on so then i normally in my back pocket i i carry the the wipe off towel uh, or the buffing towel uh, and literally just use one for uh, putting the wax on uh, and one for taking the wax off wax on wax off usual thing um so there it is that's the whole car done uh, in terms of the wax and you can see i mean that is really standing out uh it's a, it's a, it's a nice finish and it's and it's really quick uh so um yeah it's 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 i can't recommend that enough out of all these products i think that their quick shine there is 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 the one to have um uh, last but not least then um do i do the windows now do i do them later obviously i do the wheels now um so i mentioned earlier on about this uh, tire shine uh, the first thing i do is go around the beading uh, which is the sort of inner wall of the tire uh, and then i uh finish off the infill then for the full wall and then i go around the whole thing with this with this with the sponge uh, around the tire it's, it's it's kind of curved so that it takes over the lip of the tire so you you actually uh, shine the first sort of inch if you like into the first tread uh, of the tire to get that sort of full look uh, and it's dead easy this um but of course the most important thing is having a clean tire wall to, to shine. So getting that TFR on there uh, and your uh, wheel cleaner is really important. It only takes a few seconds, doesn't it? Um, some people use a brush on this. You can do, but it's a bit messy. The nice thing about a sponge is that it absorbs the liquid um, until you're ready to apply it to the tire by pushing it on you then uh, take the uh, fluid out of the sponge and in onto the tire so for me working with a sponge is um, a neater job and yeah if you do get any overspill here just take a piece of kitchen cloth and then just wipe it off the alloy wheel you don't really want any of that uh, running and the other good thing about this stuff is it doesn't fling very much you could literally take this car out and drive it now and uh, you wouldn't get any fling on the on the bodywork at all obviously if you cake the wheel in it then obviously it's going to fling a little bit but it, it's pretty thick and it stays on the car very very well indeed so there you go that's the car and now we just do this rainex um window cleaner um this cleans the glass but what it also does is it puts a film on there which helps the rain uh disperse and beat up better on the windscreen um this is an electric car and if we don't have to use our windscreen wipers then we don't because it saves energy uh, that's not to say that i drive through torrential rain without my windscreen wipers uh but it it means that 
as you get sort of a gentle shower uh it literally runs up the window and you know it if you have to use your windscreen wipers it's 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 not as frequent um but uh, even if you haven't got an electric car then use rainex because you you'll see the difference immediately um some people just do it on the front i do it all the way around the car because you know it's going to rain tonight i want to come out tomorrow morning and i have that window completely uh you know dry because the water will bead off uh i go all the way around the car and then i come back to the front windscreen and i do the windscreen twice if not three times to get a really good thick coat on there um it pays dividends this actually one coat i found doesn't last very long but two or three coats will last you at least a week um in uh in rainy conditions so i find that um i find the rain x i haven't used many other products uh but the rain x i found one really easy to put on you just literally wipe it on and it and there's no smears um i don't use it on the inside uh rain x do a defogging um um compound which i haven't found that useful in fact any time i've applied it i found that it fogs a car up more now that might be something that i'm doing but uh, i don't use that anymore um I'll, I'll probably stick that on ebay at some point um but the rain x yeah I, I'd, I'd recommend it it works it works really really nicely um and that is is the car done and it looks beautiful i i, I would say and i hope you would agree um i don't know, it took me about two and a half hours in total uh to do the car and um come lunchtime uh, we're all done we started around sort of 9 30 10 o'clock in the morning and that's a uh, job done um there's a quick uh, walk around of the car you see that deep shine that the that the quick shine gives you it really is for a spray on quick polish it's just the best um so i can hear detail is screaming at me now saying no no you don't do a deep shine every now and then and yes you do i, I was perhaps you want to do a, a deep polish this is a brand new car um and i polish it you know every couple of weeks uh, so for me it doesn't need it uh but you can see the effect there with a with a quick go over it 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 really does pop um and uh, then i parked it in the drive and there is larry the leaf anyway hope you liked it hope you found it useful you picked up some tips thanks very much for watching if you liked it please uh like it if you want to see more then subscribe thanks very much indeed